Good morning, I'm Edwin Keller, pastor of St. Stephen Evangelical Church, and we thank you so much for watching us on television. And if you're looking for a church home, we would love to have you in our church home. And I think you would feel welcome. And I thank you now for your time that you spend watching us. And we pray that God would bless you in every way. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and praise you for your presence. We thank you for each one that is here. We thank you for the word that will go forth. And we thank you, Father, that we'll have open hearts and minds to receive it. And we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, after we got born again, the Bible says we became a new person. That old things were passed away, and behold, all things have become new. But um, you realize that when we were born again, and we, we are the new person, that we're still at war with the old person. Um, the Old Testament was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and do unto others before they do it to you. And, and this, is, this is the idea that we have. And this is the war against the new man. Because Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. I want you to love each other like I love you. And, and uh, when we think about this, this is a problem. Um, because <laughs> everybody's not as lovely as we are. <laughs> so you see, I mean, we have a problem with this. Uh, I tell people sometimes, I love you in spite of you. And, and, you know, Jesus said, the way you can tell they're my people is because they love each other. Now, we like to say, well, they are Christian because they go to church, they tithe, they're faithful. Um, Jesus didn't say this. He says, you'll know they are mine because they love each other. Amen. Now, um, we see some people that claim they are devout Christians and the face is long enough to put a bridle on. <laughs> they look like they've been drinking lemon juice, that it's a sin to smile. I don't believe that this is the way that Jesus was. You know, the Bible tells us that the little children came to him and wanted to climb up in his lap. How many of you know you don't do that with somebody that don't smile and, and doesn't have a good word, Amen. doesn't want to laugh, you see, so we're at conflict. We, we, we've heard these things. In other words, if you're going to be a good Christian, you just got to abstain from everything. You, you can't do nothing wrong. And, uh, but I like the scripture where the Bible says, where sin abound, grace does much more abound. The Bible says that Moses gave us the old commandments, the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. And with, what, with the coming of Jesus, he gave us a new covenant, a covenant of love. I want you to love each other just like I loved you. Um, he loved us when we wasn't doing good. Amen. He loved us when we didn't even think about him. Didn't want nothing to do with him. You know, um, I found more and more in dealing with people is, is what's so funny is that so many people out of the church don't want anything to do with God but they want God's people to take care of them. You know, I mean, uh, if they got a problem, 
They come to the church. Well, where do you go to church? Oh, well, I don't go to church. Uh, you see, we've got to come to the place to where I want to act like Jesus acted. It's hard. It's really hard. Um, he says we're supposed to walk in faith. He says, in fact, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And what is faith? Trusting everything his word says. Being able to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when he says something, it's true. And, and the Bible says that when God's word goes forth, he makes it come to pass. He says, he says I'll watch over it to perform it. But so many of us don't believe this. You know, I mean, I can't receive from God because I don't do everything I'm supposed to do. Who does? Jesus was the only one I knew. Amen. At a pastor's retreat a while back, this fellow told me, he said, I know one woman that's perfect. I said, I don't believe that. He said, but you don't know her. I said, I don't care whether I know her or not. I don't believe that. He said, why don't you believe it? I said, if you're perfect, you don't need Jesus. And the thing about it is, I don't know about you, but I need Jesus every day. Every day of my life, I need his love and his grace in my life. Why? Because I can't do anything in myself. You know, I mean, um, people say, well, you do that because you're a preacher. Let me tell you something. Being a preacher ain't no pie job. Because I got to deal with all y'all. <laughs> but you see, um, God has given us the ability to love each other. And he says, if you love me, you'll do what I say do. Um, the way I feel like it, the way I live, I must not love him too much because I don't do everything he says. You know, uh, so he, he wants us to, to walk in faith. And to walk in faith is living by what the word says. You know, I mean... I am the righteousness of God in Christ, not because I'm a good fellow. I am the righteousness of God in Christ because Jesus made me like that. And, I mean, to you, I don't look too righteous. I don't act too righteous. But bless God, Jesus says I am. So guess who I'm going to believe? So you see, we've got to come to the place to where I know what the Word of God says, and I'm going to do the Word of God. How, how can we do this? Turn to Romans, the 12th chapter, just a minute. Uh, beginning with the first verse. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to the world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove 
what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, uh, the third verse says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, so the Bible says that every one of us have been given the measure of faith, not a measure of faith. Why is the difference there? Because if it's a measure of faith, he might have given somebody else more faith than he did me. But he didn't say this. He says, I've given every one of you the measure of faith, the same measure of faith. Now, why do some have more faith than others? Because faith has to be developed. You know, I mean, it has to be lived. Now, how do we do this? By renewing your mind. What are we talking about? Renewing our mind. Well, um, we got, get, got to get rid of the old thinking process. We got to do away with the way I used to think. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself above the Word of God. Anything that we put above the Word of God, we need to cast it down. It just, just like this morning with communion. We were talking about taking of the bread that, that represents the body that was broken for the healing of our body. And you say, well, uh, I don't believe that. You need to cast down imaginations and anything that exalted itself above the Word of God. The Word of God says the body was broken for the healing of your body. So if you don't believe this, what you're doing is going against what God said. And, you know, we need to come to the place to where... If, if I find something in the Word that pertains to me, I need to begin to operate in it. We need to study the Word. Now, I'm not saying start with Genesis and study Genesis. and on. I'm talking about what the Word says about you. In other words, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Find out what the righteousness of God is. What, what does it consist of? What happens when I become the righteousness of God in Christ? It brings me into a very, very close relationship with God. And it's not because I'm good. It's because Jesus is good. You see, and I, I need to find out when he says something in here, I, I need to bring it into perspective of my life. You know, I mean, uh, we need to study to show ourselves approved. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by physical sense evidence. You know, I mean, faith is not believing what I feel or see. Faith is believing what God said about me. You know, uh, people say, oh, well, you get saved, all your sins are forgiven. It does not say that. It says your sins are remitted. To be remitted means to be wiped out. Amen. Another scripture says that all of the things that was against us, it was nailed to the cross and done away with. 
Why? Because we have accepted the perfect sacrifice for all times. You see, the thing about it is, what we need to recognize is the fact that I don't have to perform for you. I don't have to be something special for you. God made me special. Amen. The Bible says, I'm his child. And the Bible says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And then it goes on to say that I'm seated with him. We are seated together with him in heavenly places. So you see, we need to come to the place to where we do the things that God wants us to do. All right. I might have said this recently. It needs repeating. Just like, for instance, when, when Jesus was asleep on the boat, okay, and a storm came up, and what did they do? They woke him up, and they said, look here. If you don't get up and do something, we go drown. Now, I want you to recognize something. These people were not born again. They didn't have the Holy Spirit living in them. But Jesus told them, you need to be doing something. Let me tell you something. You need to be doing something. He says, you know, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Now, this is where it comes by renewing your mind. And it says, when you renew your mind, you're transformed. What does transformed mean? It means you are taken from one place and put another place. All right. So what we're saying here is the fact that I have the authority that Jesus had when he was here. So what am I doing with it? Is, is, is Jesus saying anything to you about you supposed to be doing this? How many of you know the Bible says that God worked six days and rested? And Jesus, when he was on the cross, he said, it's finished. The old covenant relationship is finished. He went into hell and he paid your penalty and mine. And he says, now you've got a, a new covenant. He said, and, and you're supposed to be living like I lived. You're supposed to be talking to the elements. How many of you know the Word of God dominates these things? Amen. In other words, the Word of God dominated the storms and the floods. Amen. You see, all Jesus had to do was speak it. And, and you know what he said? You could do what I did. I've called you to be like me. I've called you to have dominion over these things. He had dominion over the elements. He could tell it, stop. And it did. You have that ability. One or two believe it. You have the same right that Jesus did. What happened when Jesus said something? The Holy Spirit did it. You got him here. 
He said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. You can't be ugly enough to run him off. How about that? Now, it's churches that teach if you sin, the Holy Ghost done left you. But my Bible says that the Holy Ghost says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. We need to find out what the Word of God is saying. Said this, this woman told her son, said, son, you need to read the book of Job. And he said, I do? She said, yes. I want you to read the book of Job. So he come back in a couple of weeks and she said, have you read the book of Job? He said, no, ma'am. She said, why not? He said, I can't find it. She can't, you can't find the book of Job? He said, no, ma'am. I found the book of Job. <laughs> but you see, this, this word is so very, very important to me because this word has dominion over supply and demand. Um, I'm going to get on you women now, and some of you men too. When we have a supper, oh, we're going to run out of food. If so many people showed up, we're going to run out of food. Let me tell you something. If Jesus had 5,000 with a couple of fish and five little loaves, five biscuits, if you can't pray that this food is going to hold out, ah. Word has dominion over supply and demand. Okay? The word has dominion over sickness and disease. And these signs shall follow them that believe they shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. And somebody told me the other day, I don't remember who it was, said they were in a situation where they couldn't pray out loud, but they'd lay hands on people and they'd be healed. That's scripture. Amen. Lay hands on the sick. And they shall be healed. What's so hard about that? I, I, think, I think I told you all this, but this preacher that we knew, I think he was from California. And he said that he was in a checkout line in a grocery store one day. And said, uh, God told him, said, this woman behind you is eat up with cancer. And I want you to pray for her. Now, this fellow was a lot like me. He said, God, I ain't laying hands on that woman in here. He said, I didn't tell you to lay hands on her. I told you to pray. He said, when I prayed, she fell out. They called EMS. 911, come get this woman. She's passed out. I said, what did you do? He said, I just walked off and laughed. In the old church years ago, we had somebody visiting, and one of the people came up to be prayed for, and I touched him, and he fell out, and, and this woman started looking around, and later she told me, why didn't somebody call the ambulance? <laughs> but you see, we need to recognize that our words have so much power. By your words... Your words, your words, your words, you're justified, and by your words, you're damned. Before out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you see, people say, oh, well, you know, I, I, I say these things, but I don't really mean them. What you say, you go have. You cannot mean it or mean it. It doesn't make any difference. 
If you say, well, I know I can't get healed, you're going home sick. I told y'all this story a time or two. We was at Sadie's Brothers Church, Pentecostal Holiness Church, and this woman come up to be prayed for, and everybody went up and prayed for her, but me and Sadie, we were sitting about halfway back, and, and uh, her brother stopped him and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, and he turned to me and he said, brother, the Lord just told me that if you pray for her, she'll be healed. Will you, do you have a problem with that? I said, no. So I walked up and laid hands on and prayed, and I went and sat back down. They were still up there praying. So after services... He, the preacher stood up and he said, anybody got anything they'd like to say? And she stood up and said, yes, I do. She said, when this brother laid hands on me, all the pain left my body. But I know I'm not healed, so y'all keep praying for me. You say, I mean, we're going to believe the word or not. The word has dominion and power over all the works of the enemy. He said, I've given you an authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the works of the enemy. Nothing, nothing shall any means harm you. I was, I, was, I was sharing with a fellow the other day about casting a demon out of a fellow and, and, and the man would come at me and say, I said, he'd get about this close, but he couldn't touch me. He said, and you just stood there? I said, yeah. He said, I'd have punched him out. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about it is, the Bible says that one man that had a demon beat up seven and stripped them butt naked and run them naked through the street. So I don't trust that. I trust what the Word of God says. But you see, we got to come to the place to where it doesn't make any difference about anything else. What does the Word say? What does the Word say? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and praise you for your presence with us. We, we know that the Word has gone forth. We know that you said it would not return void, that it would perform everything it was sent to do. And Father, we just thank you for it right now. In Jesus' holy name, amen.